Nefata, Nefatari Jr. Nefatari is the name of an Egyptian queen, so I guess she is saying she is the daughter of an Egyptian queen. She lives in Atlanta, influencer of femininity for black women, author, creator, black love advocate. She has a podcast called African and American. She has 142,000 followers. Her real name is Chelsea Nelson. I am the creator of Goddess Brand Blogger and Femininity Influencer. Okay. Her podcast is called African in American. She also has a book called The Black Woman's Ultimate Guide to, to Redeeming Femininity. Six the Goddess, wannabe Instagram model slash relationship guru, aka the gatekeeper of femininity. What's good, authentic fam? We're back again. It's your boy Allende. Another conversation on authentic alphas, and um, this one's gonna be another request video. So, subscriber, like I guess a week ago, maybe a little longer, subscribed, and then um, wanted me to do a special request video about my opinions and views on Melanie King. So, I did that. Um, so now, I have another um, special request for the same gentleman um, asking me what female <laughs> um, content creator that I um, that I like in the manosphere or that I think is not a chameleon um, so I'm not sure why this guy is so concerned with women in the space I have no idea um, I think a lot of you guys are way too concerned with what women say and what women think or women tell you that they think. Um, and it's not even so much that you have these concerns is that 90% of the time you have this interest and concern for the wrong reasons. A lot of you guys ask the wrong questions and even when you ask the right questions, you're asking the right question for the wrong reason. So a lot of you guys are all fucked up and backwards as far as the mindset is concerned, as far as the mentality is concerned. And this is why you're having so many issues with um, doing and saying the right thing versus doing and saying the wrong thing because you're already thinking the wrong thing and thinking in the wrong way. That's why. Um, so I've said many times, you guys need to tackle your mindset first and foremost. But anyhow, anyway, uh, um, you know, he wants to remain anonymous, which is fine because that $100 contribution wasn't anonymous. So I appreciate you, uh, ambiguous guy, uh, for that donation. And regardless of why you're so overly concerned with what women have to say in the space, I'm going to answer you nonetheless, okay? You're still gonna get your money's worth regardless of whether or not I agree with you. But uh, with all content that I create, I'm looking for how it can be useful to men in general, okay? This is what I believe evergreen content should be based on. It should be things that are useful uh, to a multitude for multiple reasons. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this interesting to myself and not um, as well as others and useful to others in a, in, a, in a teachable moment in some way or shape or form right okay so first and foremost there is no said female that i like in the male space or in the manosphere you know why because it's all in the fucking title if it's the manosphere it's not a place for female content creators Ding, 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 ding. Okay, so that's first and foremost, okay? So, I, so whether or not this person is a chameleon or genuine or whatever, to me, it's irrelevant if we're talking about the manosphere because they don't belong in the manosphere. You have to have a penis and a Y chromosome to be in this community, okay? At least in my opinion, right? I, I could be wrong, okay? I, I could be wrong. But um, anyway, there is a female that I picked and selected that I wanna talk about, and you already seen her sexy ass in the uh, little intro clip right there. And that would be uh, Mrs. Six, the goddess. Now, she's not in the manosphere, okay? And um, I chose her not only because I do actually like her content um, for women, <laughs> like I like her content for who it's designed for, and I appreciate it and I value it as such, okay? Much like I could be like, yeah, Beyonce is, a 
great singer or whatever, Beyonce doesn't make songs for me, okay? She makes songs for women, okay? And, you know, men in the LGBT community, right? And if you're a Beyonce fan and you're a heterosexual man, God bless you, but she's definitely not your target audience, buddy. Um, so with that being said, I think she's doing what I would like, say, a Melanie King to do, or what um, I see Chantel Simone doing. I don't keep up with Chantel Simone's content. I think it's amazing content. I think it's priceless, but it's not for me. It's not for my, for my demographic, right? But I love what she's doing, and when I have the time, I try to watch some of her stuff because I, because I like it, and I think that it's very useful and it's very helpful to women, and it's the messages that they need to hear, but it's from the source that they need to hear it. Much like I think guys need to focus <laughs> on getting advice and dealing with issues with other men. Jesus Christ. Okay, so this is how things are built, this is how things are maintained, this is how things are improved by men communicating with each other, exchanging ideas, and improving each other, and improving things together. That's how that works, okay? It works like that in every area and facet of life. Men working together to make things better. To make those things, and then make those things better, and maintain those things. That's men working together, right? So we don't, we don't need women to help us sort out our issues, okay? And women have a hard time, you know, taking this wisdom, this direction, and this guidance from men. So if there's women out there doing that, they are um, a blessing to us all, and they are part of the mission. They are part of the cause, okay? So um, I think that uh, Six is another example of a woman speaking to woman and speaking the truth and um, I like that and I value that okay so the first thing that I'm gonna go into though before I start getting into some of her content and sharing it with you guys who have probably never heard of this um, this lady is I'm gonna get into some of the negative things that some women would say about her and women's hate is very predictable anyway and men are becoming super predictable nowadays. That's how I know you motherfuckers aren't thinking for yourselves because you're just repeating a bunch of redundant crap that weak men repeat. Um, so anyhow, so yeah, so we're gonna listen to some of the things that her haters and her detractors would say, and I'm gonna go ahead and debunk those things in the realm of why it matters or matters not um, to me or to what she's actually doing. She gives black women advice and her, her overall message to black women is basically get a man, do whatever you got to do to get a man, keep a man. If you don't have a man, stop what you are doing at once. Go find a man. Put all of your energy towards finding a man because you are not complete without one. You are a woman and you need a man by your side to validate you. Period. Now see, my problem with Six the Goddess is it's the hypocrisy for me. Why would you tell your followers to chase men while you out here chasing a bag? You got a man, but you chasing a bag. You ain't worrying about your man. You out here posting thirst trap photos on Instagram constantly. You ain't chasing no men. You chasing the bag. So you tell your followers to chase men because you want them to be beneath you. While you getting your money together, they losing. Right. While you winning. So the key thing that I want to focus on, right? Whatever guys are watching her or supporting Six. Okay, cool. Whatever, man. You know what I mean? But she is mainly focused on um, giving advice to women, right? Guiding women. And, you know, as this female said, you know, it's basically, um, you know, number one is femininity. That's probably the major thing that she's promoting. And um, I got to respect and appreciate that because over here, I'm trying to promote the uh, the male equivalent of that. I'm trying to promote masculinity over here and guys having a, a grasp and an understanding of that for themselves so that they can embody it, be comfortable with it, express it, get familiar with it, um, you know, improve it, do whatever you gotta do with it. But that's what we're dealing with over here, right? So if she's preaching femininity to black women, well, <laughs> thank you, sis, all right? You're gonna have a hard time uh, making an enemy out of me when that's your main message is uh, black women being comfortable with femininity and embracing their femininity and getting familiar with what that is. Yeah, you're gonna have a hard time making an enemy out of me. Um, the, the next thing is, 
basically encouraging women to focus on relationships, healthy relationships, and having a man, right? Having a long time man and a partner to walk through this life with. I'm, I'm sorry, again, I, I think that's very important and it's something that's missing um, in Western culture on a whole, especially in the black community. These are the most strong, independent, I don't need a man, women, yet they're also having the most children, which to me just doesn't add up because men and women together are the requirements for giving your children the best shot in life. We need both parents, okay? So if you're out here talking this, I don't need no man shit, but you're also having the most amount of babies, I'm sorry, it just doesn't add up, it's bad math, okay? Now, what the hell this woman is talking about as far as accusing sex of being uh, hypocritical, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't, I don't see it. Um, but we know women use words, you know, to express feelings, not to express logic or fact or reality. So she's obviously using the word uh, hypocrisy out of context here because her point is that somehow Six is a hypocrite because she's telling other women to get a man and to focus on a man, yet she either doesn't have one or didn't stay with hers. Okay, <laughs> saying that something is bad, all right, doesn't make you a hypocrite if you have at one point in time did that bad thing. That does not make you a hypocrite. It just means that you are also making that mistake and you're trying to call it out and prevent other people from making that mistake. I don't, I don't see how that makes you a, a, a hypocrite. Um, and in telling women that they need to focus on getting a man, while she's focusing on getting the bag, I've never heard Six say, don't focus on getting the bag or making money. What she said is that women need to stop thinking that that matters to men. Women need to stop thinking that that increases their value to men, all right? Or that they have some type of negotiating power, a bargaining power in a relationship with an independent quality dude who doesn't need your money or your resources. How is that making you a better partner or a better woman to him? Um, when those are masculine traits to begin with, at least when you're bringing them into a relationship, they are. I'm not saying that women being independent or paying their own bills is like a masculine trait, but it giving you value in a relationship is on the masculine side of things because it gives a man value in a relationship. What the fuck? Um, so yeah, anyway, like miss me with the hypocrisy thing there because you're not making a good point. All right, lady, so if you're gonna try to prove she's a hypocrite, you're gonna have to do a better job um, than saying that she's a hypocrite for giving women the truth, okay? It is the truth that women um, have a hard time being happy um, and content when they're alone. It's just what it is, all right? A single woman is not a good look and they don't start noticing that until they get older in age. Again, that's no secret in the manosphere. It's a secret over there to women, which is why we need six telling women that in the first place, so, okay? So I don't see the hypocrisy angle. Now see, women like Six the Goddess know that a woman being with the wrong man would be her biggest downfall. That's why she didn't marry her man. You know, she was too busy chasing the bag. She didn't marry him because she knew she was just using that man until something better came along anyway. He seemed like, you know, he was a stand-up guy, but it looks like he didn't make enough money for her. It seemed like she wanted so much more than what he had to offer. And he probably peeped game and, you know, realized that he was just being used until um, she got the attention of a man with more money. So, you know day relationship ended or whatever. So she's posting thirst trap photos, which I think is actually interesting because I haven't even consumed that much of her content, but I actually have her have heard her basically address that, not the straight accusation of it, but she's made it clear that part of femininity is putting a lot of care and effort into how you look and present yourself, and it does yield a lot of benefits and perks. Like, duh, pretty privilege is a thing. So if it's one of your strong points, why wouldn't you use it? That's like Superman being able to fly, but he's like, no, nah, I'm not gonna fly because, you know, that's not fair. Like, come on, let's, let's be for real. If that's one of your qualities, use it to your advantage. And I looked at her IG and she does have a lot of thirst trap photos, but they sure as hell aren't um, as, you know, slutty or as thotty as the majority of what women are out here posting. So I can't complain too much about what she's posting in that regard. Um, and then she's also in the business of motivating women to not only be feminine, not only put a lot of care and effort into how they look, but also into being fit and being healthy. So it kind of goes hand in hand. It's like when people look at my Instagram, you know, when, when I still had an Instagram, you know, when, when, when people were still playing fair and they weren't, you know, doing all kind of 
behind the back, shady, under the table type shit to hold somebody back, but yet act like we the best. You the best, but you have to you have to break the rules to hold back your, your competition. That's not where the best. That actually means you suck at what you do and you're threatened by anybody else uh, competing on, a, on an even playing field. But anyway, back to what I was saying. Back when I had an Instagram, they'd be losers like uh, Modern Life Dating saying, oh, look at this guy, look at his pictures. He's a narcissist because he has pictures of himself. All right, bro, lazy interpretation, all right? Now, it's not what you do, it's how you do it and why you do it. Now, if I'm in the fitness business and I'm getting paid to be a fitness model, I'm getting paid to be a personal trainer, uh, I'm getting paid to coach athletes at the competition, I'm getting paid to compete in competitions myself. Sorry, dude, I kind of have to show the merchandise. Like if I'm a fucking professional bodybuilder, I might have to like, you know, actually show this body I'm building fucking idiots but anyway so if a six is in the business of coaching women into being more fit and more feminine and these are all visual aspects as far as you know fitness the way they look the way they dress the way they do their hair and carry themselves yeah she might need to show herself off a little bit god damn so it just sounds like you know somebody that's out of shape is you know doing quite a bit of hating over there all right so let's let's move on to the next one of her, her points here you see, narcissists like Six the Goddess and her big sis, Kevin Samuels, are the worst. A narcissist is just a very convincing liar. Six the Goddess is like a wolf in sheep's clothing. She's the type of woman that will set you up with a man that she know ain't shit. And, you know, at the end of the day, when you're going through it, she'll be like, girl, I ain't even know he was like that. She's the type of woman that will plot on your downfall while the whole time pretending to be your friend. Listen, I think this woman is very smart and has so much potential, but to mislead other black women, it's just not the way, sis. There's a better way to get the bag than to throw other women under the bus. Well, let's get into the, like, getting the bag and uh, the making the money aspect, okay? Now, now, this is why I think this heifer that's making this video is a hypocrite, because now, if somebody is gonna make money, okay, doing a useful, positive service, I don't understand why we have a we have problem with that. You get what I'm saying? Like people say, oh, you hating on Fresh and Fit because they're getting money. It's like, I don't hate on anybody for anything. First and foremost, never have, never will. Now, I don't really have an issue so much with them getting money. I have an issue with the fact that they're getting money, manipulating and taking advantage of young, dumb guys that don't know any better. Okay, they are straight lying and they're giving terrible advice and they're exploiting, okay, the depression and the loneliness and the lostness of the men out here. That's the opposite of out here trying to help men. Okay, Myron and Fresh are basically OnlyFans girls with penises. Okay, that's what it is. They're doing the exact same thing. They're like, oh, these guys are lonely and sad and can't get chicks and don't understand the world. Oh, I got it. Let's make money off of them. They're pathetic. Let's take advantage of them. All right. Now, when you look at uh, what Six is doing or what Kevin Samuels is doing, how are you complaining that they want to make money and they want to profit for their work and their effort? This shit takes time. All right. And it takes a lot of patience and it's hard to stay motivated doing this when so many people would rather go towards the lies. So many people would rather not hear the truth. They'd rather not take accountability. They'd rather not work on themselves. And most people would rather just hear some gossip and hear some tea. Which brings me to my next point. Black women criticizing uh, women like Six the Goddess for, for uh, basically making a business out of telling women the truth and, and, and trying to coach women and, and help women and mentor women is ridiculous when you don't hate on or tear down the Tasha K's and the, um, I don't even remember the name of this other chick that's always saying something negative about uh, black women. Oh, Cynthia, Cynthia K. Cynthia whatever, all right? That chick, okay? Always negative, a lot of bullshit, never tells the truth, right? And just basically fuels black women's anger and hate for black men for profit. So she's profiteering that. She monetized, okay, um, the deteriorating relationship between black men and black women. She monetized that negativity. The child would rather complain about six that's trying to bring black men and black women together and restore the black family. That's her message. And you'd rather tear her down for profiting off of that than tear down somebody like Tasha K who just wants to gossip about successful black people. 
That sounds a little bit more hypocritical to me, okay? You guys would rather watch and support Fresh and Fit who bring women on their show just to, you know, emphasize the lowest denominator in women, just to emphasize the lowest quality women that we have right now. Just to exploit them and pick them apart and, uh, you know, put them on display like, like, like some type of weird circus for all you degenerate dudes who don't get chicks and don't know how to operate with women, don't know how to lead women, don't know how to guide women, don't know how to maintain women, don't know how to satisfy women, don't know how to do shit positive with women or contribute to them or make them better in any way. So let's just sit around and watch Myron kick another girl out. Yeah, yeah, punish bad behavior. <laughs> there was thoughts. You guys would rather that than somebody tell you not only the truth, but tell you what you need to improve about yourself and how you can actually bring some value to abroad. And give them bad advice on purpose because you know they are looking for somebody to look up to. And this is Sixth God is making fun of baby mamas knowing good and well she is a baby mama. You see, this is what I'm talking about, narcissists. Now she knows she a baby mama. So why are you talking down on baby mamas and baby daddies when you know you have a baby daddy? Make it make sense. All right, so I'm not too interested in individuals. I'm not too much interested in people's personal shit. I'm more interested in their uh, message and their continuity. So um, I'm partly starting this video with these, uh, you know, clips of her being criticized simply because I don't want you guys telling me this shit. That's really what it is. This is preemptive because I know how you guys are. A lot, a lot of you guys, you, you act like how the chicks act. I'm sorry. I'm keeping it real. And if you're offended, please just leave the damn channel. I'm trying to get rid of the, you soft hearted guys that are like, you know, whining and, 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 and all triggered and offended just like how the females are. Like, I, like, I don't want to deal with that with the women. I damn sure don't want to deal with it with the men that I'm trying to help toughen the fuck up. All right. So this is preemptive in the sense of, I don't want to hear you guys telling me, oh, Yenda, you over here co-signing the six. Don't you know she's a single mama? Don't you know she... Bro, I don't, I don't care about that. I'm listening to what she's saying, and I'm looking at the validity of it. I'm not looking at how beautiful and how gorgeous she, she is, okay? And I'm not over here trying to get all into her personal business like a soap opera. I'm not with the gossip shit, okay? So guys, don't come and tell me all her flaws and tell me, no, she's a chameleon because, because she doesn't have a man and she's a single mama and, bro, stop, okay? I'm dealing with her content and in her content, she's telling women the truth. All right, and she's giving them a hell of an advantage with that and basically telling them what they need to be focusing on and what they need to be thinking about and how they need to be uh, maneuvering themselves. So whatever happened with her, man, I really don't care. Um, but uh, what she's saying to women, as far as I can see, is actual and factual. It's not just hair. This is her, she did a video talking about um, telling women to stop wearing wigs because their daughters are looking up to them. But the whole time, you go on Instagram with weave in your head. Now, why you gonna tell your followers not to wear wigs, but you gonna go put weave in your head? Because you know, a woman with weave and makeup can get out there and compete where a woman that's just wearing her natural hair and no makeup can't compete. A, a natural woman cannot compete with a made up woman and she knows that, which is why she keep a beat face, she keep her hair done, she keep weave and wigs and you know extensions in her head, but she tell, make a video telling her followers not to do it. But she doing what she gotta do to compete. This is what I don't like. About this chick's uh, attack on Six is her hair. So supposedly Six is telling black women to wear their hair natural and, you know, low the weaves, low the weave them. But I don't know, bro. Majority of the time that I see uh, Six, the goddess, she's wearing her hair natural. I don't know. Maybe I'm biased. Maybe I'm tripping. I've seen her wear extensions. I've seen her wear wigs or weaves or whatever. But majority of the time, she's wearing her hair natural. So I don't know, man. I don't know. Okay. The fact that she's telling women um, to 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 do that more often, I don't see how that's a bad thing. When black men want that, black men are attracted to that. Black men have been asking for that for decades now. Um, and it's just a black woman saying, and, and embrace your beauty, embrace your, your, your ethnic design. Again, I don't see what the problem is. I don't see where the hypocrisy is. Um, the next thing is it's like, oh yeah, Six is a hypocrite because she's telling black women that that influences their daughters, but yet she wears weaves and wigs from time to time. Okay, number one, she doesn't do it all the time. Number two, she has a son, not a daughter. Number three, she's still right in the advice that she's giving women, all right? So we're gonna move on from all the negative bullshit about her. Um, 
I'm gonna go ahead and share some clips of her content with you guys. Not because I'm encouraging you guys to go over there. Okay, I'm not encouraging you guys to take advice from women, but I will tell you this, a lot of her content could be useful um, as far as uh, pointing out and highlighting some of the, um, the fall shorts of black women and how you might can start wrapping your head around um, talking to women about the things that you would like to see them improve or work on. If you're putting that much effort into a chick, right? If you're in a leadership position, a leadership role, you're gonna have to kind of know what it is that you're trying to, to fix, change, or improve and work on how you can communicate with the woman in a way that's gonna get her to cooperate. Because Lord knows it's not uh, easy and it doesn't come natural. So I think there is some value in her content as far as figuring out how to relate to, uh, to our sisters. All right. Whatever it is, they come to me and they say, okay, um, you know, this is my circumstance. You know, how do I exercise my femininity to accomplish this, that, on the third? So the number one question I'm always getting from women is, how do i how do i get a man to do this or how do i get him to do this or or i get phone calls oh six of goddess and everybody's the victim it's these big bad men that are just out here putting you all through it. all this hell through no fault of your own you have no power in this and it's like as women, all I really see is women just kind of like going around like tattletailing in a way on a man. Like he's doing this and he's doing that. So from this point forward, I am not going to be taking any more consultations that have anything to do with how do I get a man to do such and such. Okay. The only thing that I am going to be answering is how you can move yourself as a woman accordingly to what people around you are doing. I am not going to sit and keep answering questions of, okay, so this is what you do to make him do this. This is what you do to make him do that. The truth is, you cannot make them do anything. Okay, you cannot make them do anything, okay? All we can do as women is control ourselves, okay? Um, a lot of women are super excited to hear about their femininity until they find out how much it requires you to be the one that's wavering. Um, it, everybody wants to be feminine until you find out that you're the one that has to be understanding, that you're the one that has to flow and move accordingly. Then all of a sudden, femininity doesn't look so fun anymore. Femininity looks fun when it comes to putting on dresses and makeup and doing our hair. The minute it requires any kind of self-reflection, self-knowledge um, uh, of yourself, self-accountability that's when we start to shy away from it like oh hold on now now i said i wanted to be feminine but i'm not with all that you know i'm not with all that giving to a man and understanding people no so what i'm gonna do uh with these clips is i'm gonna i'm going to basically give my 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 take on what are some of the key things that i like about her and her content and i'm also going to um deliver it to you guys in a way that can be useful to men as a lot of the things that she's addressing over on the female side, I believe need to be addressed on the male side, right? So what I don't like the most about the manosphere right now is that it's so like anti-woman and so judgmental of women and everything is about the woman and it's the woman's fault, you know, every, every time, right? That's becoming extremely irritating, right? And it's not helpful, it's not productive whatsoever. And it's basically making us more and more the male version of feminism. Why? Because feminism is fraudulent in what it claims to be pursuing, which is equality, and we know that's BS. But also, uh, feminism has this attitude of you can't be pro-woman without being anti-man, anti-male. And that's what I'm seeing now in the manosphere. You guys act like you, you can't be, uh, you can't be, pro-man without being uh, anti-woman, right? So everything is like against the woman. And, and I see it in my comments, you know, here and there, and, and I'm trying to weed that shit out. So if you hate women and you have a problem with women, you resent women, my channel is definitely not the channel for you, all right? When I'm interviewing women and I'm dissecting women, it's not so that we can bash them. It's so that we can better understand them, hold their fucking hands, and lead them out of the ignorance and the foolishness that they've let themselves be led into.
That's, that's what it's about. It's not saying, oh, look, she's a thought. Oh, look, she's gonna be a baby mama one day. Oh, look, come, come on, come on. You get, you, when you guys do that, you come off just as weak as the women. So, so, so I want you guys to, to, to know that. When you blurt this stuff out like little children, you either look like you're a little sad guy that got his feelings hurt and now you hate women, or you just look immature as hell and not in a position to lead a woman uh, anyway. So let's listen to what she was saying, right? A lot of women, they think femininity sounds good until they realize what it requires of them as far as work, commitment, um, improvements, you know what I mean? Accountability, self-discipline, when, when all that stuff comes in, then they're like, oh, wait, no, I just, you know, just wanted to dress up and you know put on lipstick and makeup. Yeah, exactly. A lot of women think they're feminine just because they dress like women. Like, no, there's a hell of a lot more that goes into it. Well, guess what? Um, guys are doing the same thing. They're bitching and whining and complaining about the lack of femininity, but then they themselves are an example of a lack of masculinity, right? So uh, being the man in a relationship, it's, it's not easy and, it, and it's work um, and it's full time. This is why not every guy is entitled to a woman. You guys, you guys act like you know, you're entitled to a woman just because, you're, you're really not. Now, are there quality guys out there that deserve much better? Yeah, most quality guys deserve much better. Most guys in general deserve, you know, better than what they're getting and what they're dealing with. But there are still a lot of guys that don't deserve a woman anyway. You don't deserve a woman no way, no how, anyhow. So you're over here concerned about the quality of women when you're not even in a position to get or maintain one yet, okay? That's like a 14-year-old boy with no driver's license and no driving experience wor worrying about cars, worrying about the quality of cars and worrying about all the details. Why are you worrying about that, bro? You can't even drive yet. You're not even licensed to drive yet and you can't afford a car, no way. So what difference would it fucking make, okay? If cars were the best, you know, cars they've ever been or if cars were just a scam, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make a difference, okay? Until you first put yourself in a position to even have and maintain that, all right? So it's the same thing with a, 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 a lot of you dudes, bro. You're worrying about the wrong shit because you're not ready to stare a chick yet anyway. You're not ready to get into the, into the driver's seat. So we gotta first, you know, look at ourselves and be the first person that we hold accountable before we start complaining and pointing the finger and whining or whatever the fuck. That's how the masculine works. The masculine is the energy that builds and produces, okay? So it's more so in a man's mind to see something and be able to look forward like, okay, this is what I can make of it, okay? Literally make of it, literally build something out of it. Whereas the feminine does not work that way. We're not the builders and producers. We are more so the nurturers of what already exists. We are more so the influence for directions that things are already going in. But we are not necessarily the energy that takes everything from nowhere. We're not necessarily the ones that take anything out of darkness and just create okay we normally have to be given something for us to multiply it or for us to nurture it okay so i say this to guys all the time it's like yo if you're gonna have a chick in your life you have to give instruction you have to set it to purpose the problem is a lot of guys they don't have any purpose they don't have a purpose of their own anyway so there's nothing to set a chick on okay they just get up every day and they go to work for somebody else and that's it now if you think that you can't have your own purpose while working for someone else, then you don't know what purpose is. If you're getting up and working for someone else, it should be part of your overall purpose anyhow. So there's nothing wrong with having a job or having a boss, okay, or working for a job. There's nothing wrong with that. But the thing is, is that you also have to have a plan and a vision and a goal and a purpose for yourself. Now, if you have that, now it's just a matter of how can I delegate okay something to this woman that's going to be a benefit to what i'm trying to do for myself already how can i make her part of my team how can i get her on my program you have to first have a program though you have to first have a team though right okay so that's what i'm gonna say about that um she made the point to say that like yo men are the ones that are builders and women are the ones that are nurturers bro i've been saying that you can go back to tips and whips i got a short video all about that and it's called something to the effect of men build women nest which is the reality of it okay that's how it operates okay men are the ones that go explore new lands men are the ones that go conquer and colonize once they get it comfortable and they add ac that's when the women want to come over that's how that works. So a lot of you guys haven't even built something that a woman would want to be a part of, but then you're complaining about the quality of women that don't want to be part of your life. Bro, 
We've heard it a million times. Women are born with value. Men have to work to build value. It's really simple. Okay, and another, another way of looking at it, um, or the difference is, okay, is that men want a woman for the woman, for the person, for the individual. Women want a man for the lifestyle, okay, for the life that this guy can provide them. That's how that works, all right? So, get on your shit, guys. If you got money, you can get women, okay? Now, if you got a lot of money, you can get some of the finest women in the world. So, with that being said, I want you to know the way your woman look represents your income. I see this recession and hit a couple of y'all upside the head. <laughs> Ladies, let me tell you something. Your man is with you because at this point in his life, you the best he can do right now. I know it hurt. I know. I know. But, but I'm telling you, if he find a way to get rich, your pink slip is on the way. Hey, your man get rich, I'm telling you, you coughed the wrong way is over. I can't do this no more. I, I got paper now. I ain't got to do it. Hey guys, most men cheat because most men are not with the woman they really want to be with. The subject of cheating is something that gets brought up a lot in our discussions. And I feel like for a lot of women, they feel like cheating is the worst thing a man can do. Whenever someone breaks up, they assume cheating. Whenever something goes wrong with a man, they assume cheating. Like cheating is what a lot of women are super focused on. Okay. So if you survey a group of men, the average group of men, no matter the race, if you ask them all, do, do, do men, are men cheaters in majority? What most men will say is that most men cheat. Okay, they're not going to say that all men cheat because all men don't cheat. Okay, all men do not cheat. However, most men do. And why is that? There's a lot of different reasons. However, the underlying reason behind it all is that most men, the woman that they are with was not their first choice of woman. She's not the woman that he really wanted. Um... You know, I feel like a lot of these conversations talk about how women settle, but women may, women may settle. However, a lot of men are pressured into relationships and marriages. Now, how I'm going to respond to this when she's talking about the fact that, yes, most men cheat. And she's talking about the why. The why is most men are not with a woman that's 100% satisfactory. They're not with the woman they really want to be with, right? Well... I've been saying this to guys for a while now that why are you with a chick that's subpar? I also tell guys why are you even hitting on or hollering at chicks that aren't up there? Okay, stop shooting low because uh, you know you, you don't have a good success rate or you're not closing well. If you're not closing well, that means you need to put more time and energy and effort into bettering you before you start worrying about women. Okay, if you have to settle for fours and fives, to have a woman, bro, it, it's not worth it, okay? So my take, of course, is gonna be a little bit different than everyone else's. Now, you see what that comedian was saying. There's a ton of truth in that. The problem is, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, right? Feel free to get in the comments and tell me how I'm wrong, okay? But this is just my opinion, okay? Yes, the woman that you are with is an example of what you can get. But if that's low to the point where it doesn't serve you or it's embarrassing, then what's the point of it? Okay, a lot of you guys need to stop acting like you need a woman. Women need men, okay? For far more than what they think. That's why they say stupid shit like, I don't need no man. Just because she can go to work and pay her bills, she thinks all of a sudden she don't need a man, right? But she's throwing her life, she's pissing her life down the drain because she doesn't have any direction, any leadership, and there's no problem solving skills in her life. All right, there's no discipline in her life. There's no standard, okay? That's because there's no man, okay? Now, but when it comes to men, men, you don't need a woman. So if you're over here settling for subpar women that aren't even contributing to your life, you're wasting time, energy, money, resources, and that chick is holding you back from you getting ahead as fast and efficiently as possible and you getting a quality woman in your life. So you're actually doing yourself a disjustice just to have a hole to, to poke at sometimes. Come on, guys. Come on. It's, it's weak and it's pathetic, bro. All right? Stop. 
And it's part of why these subpar women think that they're so valuable and so important and so special because there's always some sucker lame waiting to wife them up just because they have a vagina. That's it. They have no personality. They have no contribution. They have no utility, no, nothing. There's no encouragement. There's, there's nothing. It's just a mouth and a, and a vagina. And they're with her just because she's a female, right? So that's these pathetic ass guys that are propping these women up by offering them relationships and commitment when they should just be ignoring them. They should be invisible to you, okay? I'll give you an, an analogy. That's like a guy saying, oh, I'm just gonna get this hoopty just to get me from A to B, um, you know what I'm saying, while I make money and save money for the car that I really want. Okay, hold on, hold on. Now, that could make sense in certain situations. If you live somewhere where there's no public transportation, you gotta get to work one way or another, so now you need that little piece of shit hoopty. You see what the connection I'm trying to make? If you need that chick, if you need that older chick, if you need that fat, overweight woman, if you need that ugly woman, if you need that l less attractive woman for something to benefit you and your overall mission and purpose and goal so you can get to the next level, okay, go ahead and drive your hoopty. You understand what I'm saying? Go ahead and drive your raggedy car until you can get to the next step, the next phase, okay? I got it. But if that is not a necessity, then why are you weighing yourself down with it? Why are you putting gas in that piece of shit hoopty? Why are you paying insurance on that raggedy crappy car when something like Uber exists these days or public transportation is readily accessible in your city? Hmm? Why don't you just forego not having a vehicle for now so that you can save up your money quicker and faster, okay, and still get where you need to go? Okay, so what I'm trying to say is in most cases, this unattractive female is not necessary. She's not useful, she's not helpful in your life. She's just holding you back. You might as well do what you gotta do until you can get higher quality women at ease. You got it? Next. So we are at the point of a great divide, okay? Gone are the days of first dates consisting of questions like, what are your favorite color? And what do you like doing for fun, okay? This is very serious. OK, this situation has put us in a place where it literally has the potential to break families apart. OK, now I ran across this article and honestly, this article made me really sad. And I'm going to go ahead and share it on the screen and I'm going to read it aloud with you guys. OK, I was very disturbed at this. Uh, this article is courtesy of Baller Alert. The title of the article is Anti-Vax Dad Goes on the Run with Seven-Year-Old Daughter to Prevent Her from Getting, you see it, I'm not going to say it, I'm not going to say it. Um, I've made a joke about this in the past, about the whole, listen, on y'all be asking the wrong questions in the beginning of relationships, okay? I do not blame this father for doing what he's doing because to be honest, I'd be doing the same thing. If you were trying to inject my child with something so new and so experimental, when my child has not even had the opportunity to fully develop their mind, uh, their brain, to have children, to live a healthy life, I'd be doing the same thing, honey. I would. This would transform into all red with a hat, honey. I would be giving all types of Carmen San Diego. All right. We are going to have to make it very clear when it comes to the CV stuff. All right. People are going to need to have conversations immediately. How do you feel about the you know what? You guys already know I've been conscious. I've been aware long before there was an Internet. So I already uh, know where her head is at with this. And I agree with her. And I like the fact that she's actually even touching on topics like this. OK, most women are nowhere even near thinking about these type of issues or on this type of level. They're just reactionary, they're emotional, and they're just being led by the media, okay? So this is a, a, a very, very uh, important and unique reason as to why I actually like uh, Six and what she's talking about and what she's bringing to the equation. Because not only is it true, valuable, and necessary, it's very, very scarce and unique because like I just explained, other women, they're their head isn't even here. It's not even on those topics. Most women don't even want to think about or talk about the doom and gloom that's uh, up ahead, okay? And I also agree with her as far as men need to be having these conversations with women 
in the beginning right away you need to know where a chick's head is at on certain things because this could be a major issue down the line if you go ahead and invest in a relationship with this chick and she's the type of chick that's like oh no the new set i gotta get it and we gotta get it it's like that's that's a hell of an issue um, to be at odds on, okay? She's moving with the establishment and she's willing to get the jab? What? You willing to get the jabba jabba and you got a guy who's dead set against it and absolutely not gonna go down that path? Those two people cannot live in the same home as far as I'm concerned. You, uh, like, I, and, I, and I, I brought this up to my girl a long time ago, like right away, because unlike most people, I knew where this whole pandemic thing was going. I know it was a pandemic, and I knew it was coming and I knew where it was going, all right? Y'all wrap your head around that, but I knew in 97 that this was coming and people were calling me crazy and telling me I'm a conspiracy theorist and all this other shit, like how y'all do, okay? But people that are aware are aware, all right? We don't need everybody else to understand and agree. Y'all are in the dark, y'all are sheep. That's what sheep do. You keep your head down, you eat grass. Okay, but I told my girl from back the first lockdown, I said, okay, this is where this is going and I am absolutely not doing that. Okay, so from then we had that conversation. If she had told me that she was gonna be one of these people that listen to the news and do what she's told, that would have been the end of the relationship because I call the shots in the house. I make the decisions, all right? I make the decisions that's gonna affect everybody under the roof. That's how that works. So this is something that I've seen comics use this as a joke. Um, it's kind of an ongoing thing where, uh, who was it? I think it was Chris Rock that had a joke about this. And Chris Rock said, <laughs> uh, God introduces his boy. This is it. When they walk away, this is it. <laughs> this is what today's stream is about to be about. Let me share this with you. Let me share this. Let me share my screen. <laughs> This is what today's video is going to be about because there's so many women out here that are extremely guilty of this. And we're going to go ahead and talk about this today. This is what today's stream is about. If a guy introduces his boy to his new girlfriend, when they walk away, his boy goes, oh man, she's nice. I got to get me a girl like that. <laughs> if a woman introduces her new man to her girlfriend, when they walk away, a girlfriend goes, I gotta get hip. Where's the lie? Okay, there's truth behind all comedy here. All right? There is truth behind all comedy. A man might see you and he might hit you, you know, he might hit you with the, you know, the god damn shawty. He might even nudge his homeboy like, you know, that's how you know it's real. When they nudge the homeboy or the homeboys give each other the look, that's how you know, sis, you're doing it. Okay, that's how you know, sis, it's giving. OK, when he hit the nudge or when him and his homeboys give that silent look at each other, that's how, you know, sis is giving. OK, so they might do all that. They might, you know, be thinking, "Ooh, OK, but then they see you're with a man. You know what they do then? Turn right back around. Oh, never mind. Never mind. She taken. She off the market. Now, ladies, why is it that it goes that way? Why is it that when a man sees a woman with a man, why the man falls back? Why do humans do everything they do? Humans do as much as they can get away with, which is why humans need consequence and need rules. The reason why the man, it doesn't matter how fine shot he is, the reason why he'll pull back when he sees that she's with somebody is because he knows it will come to physical violence. He knows if I sit in front of this man and disrespect his woman, try his woman in front of him, he know what that means. It means physical blow. So, yeah, I like that she brought this up and um, how I'm going to flip it and address the men with it is, uh, yeah, man, guys nowadays do and say a lot of things that are cause for a fight. They're, they're, they're grounds to get punched in the face. But uh, since we've lost sight of that and we've lost sight of the, of the G code and how things are supposed to be uh, handled, what's the proper protocol, you got a lot of dudes out here conducting themselves like, like women's. And the reason why whammons do and say the shit that they do is because there is no threat of violence. That's why, okay? And it's not the same uh, for men, right? So she's pointing that out. Most women are, are like oblivious to that. Um, but then on a biological uh, um, level, I think the reason why guys know, you know, leave that alone is because females are something that 
dominant males can have um, you know one of or more of if they can protect and provide more of and women also on some you know animal level also understand that as well they know that just because a guy already has a woman does not mean um, that that um, he's off limits to them right but that's a whole other thing and we deal with that different socially nowadays but um, you know I believe that's why we instinctually understand that when a guy is already pounding some chick you might as well just leave it alone because she's already spoken for um, but a lot of you young boys nowadays your head is like soup when it comes to these basic concepts y'all out here doing all kind of things with women that's already messing with other guys like y'all out here having babies with chicks that already have babies by other men yeah i don't know y'all doing a lot of weird stuff bro um y'all also doing a lot of things and saying a lot of things that should get you slapped and punched in the face but that started phasing out in the 90s so you know and there's a lot of women that are putting their hands in men's faces and raising their voice and insulting men and saying a bunch of things that just didn't take place in the past because women understood that uh, you know guys and girls are different and you can't be talking to guys like that and expecting there to be no consequence but nowadays women get away with that type of stuff so you guys have to learn how to conduct yourselves in a way that you don't put yourselves in those positions to be disrespected um, or get yourself jammed up or get yourself in some trouble interacting with the wrong low energy female Men do not ever say what they're insecure about. In all my years, I've never heard a man say, you know, I'm really insecure about, they don't do it. What they do is they just move accordingly to what they are insecure about in their lives. They don't say it out loud. They just move the way they need to do to appease their insecurities, okay? Every man wants a woman who looks good, is in shape, is beautiful, takes care of herself, is feminine, that has the little waist with the booty and the hips. Every man wants that. I don't care who he is. Every man, every heterosexual man wants it. Can every man handle that? No. There are men who do not want to be in a relationship or wife, a woman who is extra fine and who is her best self. There are some men who do not want the competition that will come with every time their woman leaves the front door, a man is trying to take her from you. Some men simply cannot handle that. Okay. Number one. So when we sit and say some men like big women, some men just know to stay in their lane. They know that with the big woman, that successful men are not out here trying to take her from you. So that way he knows that no matter how up and down his finances go, no matter how up and down he is in life, she's probably not going anywhere. She does not have a lot of options. Number one. Number two, the size of the women in all races and all societies, not just us. The size of the women in all societies is directly correlated to the economic status of the men in her social or racial group. In a nutshell, the bigger the women, the poorer the men. The smaller the women, the richer the men. If you Google spouses of millionaires, you will not see one single big woman married to a millionaire. Please do not, please do not get in my comments talking about the one in one billion big woman that you know that has a millionaire husband. When half of the time she's grandfathered in because she was small when she married him and they didn't get a prenup because they got married young. So he's cheaper to keep her. Please don't show me the one fat girl that has a, a millionaire husband in my comments. Do not do it. OK, I don't care. Before you disagree with what I'm saying, remember, I don't care. And the reason why I don't care is because what I'm saying is facts. It's not opinion. This is not feelings or emotions. I do not like emotions in arguments. Yeah, I agree uh, with her to an extent on her views as far as obesity and overweight women. Uh, it's funny too because I was uh, meeting with a with a fella. I got an introduction with a guy. We were talking business and everything like that, and everything was good. You know what I'm saying? We were seeing eye to eye on a lot of things. And then he had some company come. You know, chick came over, and um, yeah, man, this chick was like overweight very very uh, sloppy with it but then she put so much effort into her hair and her makeup and i was just like it kills me when women do this shit like it kills me when women do that like i don't understand that logic it's like that's like cleaning the outside of your car but you don't clean the inside of your car like i don't know it just doesn't make sense to me it's contradictory it's like listen you need to 
figure out something, what you're gonna do with your, with your weight um, before you worrying about spending all that money in Sephora. Uh, but anyhow, after the fact, I was like leaned over to my other boy. I'm like, yo, is this his girl? And my boy's like, Psh. and I was like, oh, hell no. Um, but yo, it was subconscious, bro. I instantly lost respect for dude. I just was like, this is ridiculous, bro. I don't even know what's the, what's the point. You know what I mean? Because if you tell me this chick is paying your rent, part of me is gonna be like, mm, okay, makes sense. But then the other part of me is gonna be like, what type of gigolo shit is this? You see what I'm saying? So either way, I'm just like, why is this chick in your life? Because what you're doing is you're encouraging it, you're enabling it, you're co-signing to it. Uh, you know, listen, okay? So the problem isn't people having flaws or people having problems. The problem is people ignoring these problems and these flaws and acting as if they're not there, like they don't exist. That's the problem. The problem is fat chicks saying, I'm not fat, I'm big bone, I'm curvy, I'm voluptuous, it's body positivity. No, it's laziness, it's failure, all right? It's unhealthy, okay? It's stop trying to rename shit. So when guys be messing with fat chicks and stuff like this, it's like, come on, dude. Are you genuinely telling me that that's what you like? That's what you're into? If I gave you a million dollars, would you still be dating these type of women? If the answer is no, then don't date them now. I'm sorry, bro, because you're playing yourself. You are playing yourself when you do that type of shit. That's like somebody having plenty of money, but they purposely eat at Checkers and Wendy's and the lowest quality food where people in the back making their sandwiches with no gloves. You mean to tell me you can afford any food you want, but you're over here eating the most disgusting, drop the slice of cheese on the floor, picked up and put it back on your burger anyway type food? That's what you eat and you got options? So this is what I'm saying, bro. You guys gotta knock it off. All right, you gotta knock it off with the being with these beastly, you know, um, what, what does Coach Greg Adams call them? Busted Pillsbury Doughboy uh, Cake? Y'all guys gotta stop, stop doing that. You have to stop, bro. You have to stop. Because here's the problem. You got guys over here whining, complaining about women, pointing the, women at, uh, pointing the finger at these low quality women, but at the same time, you have more than enough men over here validating these women. So we're sending mixed, mixed, mixed messages. Okay, that's why you have women saying stupid shit like guys like big girls, guys like me, guys like. Yeah, they think guys like that because there's guys that are still trying to fuck them. There's guys, there's, there's guys that are still trying to be with them. So as I've said many times, women cannot tell the difference between sexual energy and non-sexual energy. Sexual attention, non-sexual attention. They, they can't tell the difference, bro. So you guys need to have higher standards. Higher standards in the women that you marry, higher standards in the women that you date, higher standards in the women that you just simply sleep with, and higher standards in the women that you fucking talk to, that you even open your mouth and speak to, okay? And you can call me whatever names you wanna call me, but just remember, those same women will ignore you if you are broke. They will ignore you if you live with your mother. They will ignore you if you're short. They will ignore you if you're fat. They'll ignore you if you're ugly. They'll ignore you if you're useless. Okay, so so knock it off, knock it off. I'm just being honest over here, I'm just keeping it real, all right? And you're also talking to someone that has taken many of obese women and got them in the best shape of their life, all right? So if you're not making this person better, you're not, you're not helping them improve themselves, right? Then all you're doing is enabling their dysfunction, all right? So fuck you if you got a problem with me just keeping it funky and keeping it real. And from what I can see, Six has a lot of issues with people mad at her because she's telling fat women that, listen, being fat's not a good look. Kill the messenger, why don't you? I don't know why that was just so funny to me. I am cackling. Okay, 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 let's continue. <laughs> You're mean. It don't matter. I can say what I want. Okay, Just well, you can get the fuck off the show, too. I don't man, get the fuck off the show, too. Wait, 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 wait. Now, you see. <laughs> okay, for real. For real. We're serious. We're, we're serious right now, guys. Now, y'all know I be Virgoing all over the place, and y'all know I am the queen of picking up on everything. Now, watch this one here. Watch this one here, okay? I'm going to rewind a little bit. Watch the body language that he has towards Asian. And watch how he nervously picks up this cup once the man starts speaking. I want y'all to see that one more time. This is the power of male protection. Yes. Damn. Um, what I look for in a man of love, that's like approaching me. Hold on. He don't play the music. Hold on. He's ready. He is about it, about it. He ready. Let me like, put. Hold on. 
He puts his, look how he puts his arm up on the table. Puts his arm on the table like he leans in, like he's ready for war. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Now watch. Excuse me? <laughs> you mean. I'm not mean at all. Okay, I don't care. Have you I'm been here the whole time? No. All right, then. So you don't know what's happening, right? Okay, then. So. How are you gonna watch. come on somebody's show and not know what go down and say, "Oh, you're mean." It don't matter. I can say what I want. Okay, we can get the fuck off the show too. I don't give a fuck. Chill, too. man. What? Chill out, bro. Listen, don't like, no, no, you can go. No, 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 no. You see how the, you see how everything changes? Now the hands start going up. Like now he's trying to like reason. Like, well, you can go. Voice, his voice, the bass went out of his voice a little bit. Well, you can go. You can go. Well, now he start to kind of back down. Let me tell y'all, ladies, something. Men don't care. You, we as women be thinking we can go in these men face and do all this and they care. They don't care. They can slap fire from us and keep moving. It doesn't matter. What they do care about is the threat posed by other men. This is why y'all shouldn't get your ass on the internet. Okay. First it was, you can get the fuck out. Now it's, well, you can go. Well, you can go. Once, once buddy was like, bro, chill. Okay. Uh, well, you can go. You can go. This is the power of male protection. This is why you don't get your ass on the internet and disown your men and leave yourself for the streets uncovered. All right, so I'm gonna end it out with just a clip of her basically saying shit that I've said a million times about Fresh and Fit and Myron in particular is that nigga, he doesn't keep the same energy with females that he does with males. He doesn't even keep the same energy with females across the board because if it's a female with a big name, whatever, all of a sudden, you know, he, he handles it completely differently. He puts some caution on it. Um, and when it's dudes, none of that tough guy stuff in person. Yeah, tough guy shit all over their internet. Tough guy shit in front of the, the microphone, but none of that tough guy shit in real life. I just recently had another individual tell me how nobody can see Myron in real life anymore in Miami. I was like, dude, you're not telling me nothing new. I've been saying that. I've been saying that. People act like I'm making this stuff up. This punk ass pussy don't come outside no more. He don't go to no public areas or nothing like that anymore, right? Because he done said too much, okay? He done, he done said said a whole bunch of shit that he doesn't want to be confronted on in person because he's a fucking pussy okay he doesn't want none of these goons running up on him talking about what you say about black women he don't want none of these dudes running up on him that he offended he damn sure don't want me running up on him so okay he, he's in hiding now but this is the same dude that in 10 seconds flat just like she showed you he can go from acting all tough with a female to toning it all down once a man says something with some bass in his voice all right so i've been calling out that hypocrisy a long time ago right i showed you in real time that he ain't gonna kick a man out of his place the way that he'll put women out right not even he ain't putting no hands he ain't he ain't stepping over to you he ain't, he ain't pushing you out he ain't getting physical at all but with women this motherfucker get all up in their face and physically wants to remove them but 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 <laughs> But he won't do it with a dude. And then now just recently, he got the nerve to have a whole write out, a whole notes that he got on Nicki Minaj. You wanna, you wanna fire back at Nicki Minaj when number one, she didn't even say your name. And number two, you know damn well, you would not be debating this chick in person. You would not. And we know that because you folded up with Britney Renner. Then has a nerve to say, oh, did you see the whole interview? She was agreeing towards the end of the interview. Yeah, because you were saying a bunch of preschool shit. You were saying a bunch of PG-13 shit that anybody would agree to women included. You weren't throwing any type of curveballs. You weren't playing hardball at all, okay? You were playing softball and you let her call you all kind of shit to your face. So it's funny how Nicki Minaj could tell you eat a dick, okay? And you, and you got a whole pamphlet ready to fire back at her online and then have the nerve to say, oh, I'll debate her, I'd love to debate her, really? Because when Brittany Renner showed up for the debate, you did not say any of the things you said about her to her face, number one, and number two, you let her call you a bitch-ass nigga to your face. Tell you that your podcast you work so hard on is whack and the shit is underwhelming. You let her say all this to you less than two feet away from, you, your, from your face, but Nicki Minaj said, eat a dick, and now you, now you, now you, fire, you, fire, you fire her off on YouTube, right? So all I'm saying is eat a dick is not far from use a bitch ass nigga. So why didn't you have all that fire and all that clap back for Britney Renner across the table telling you use a bitch ass nigga to your face, but yet you firing off at Nicki Minaj for saying eat a dick. I don't know guys, but I'm out of here. All right, stop being so hypnotized by these pretty faces and what these women got to say. 
get on your damn grind. Stop being, you know, easily fooled and being gullible. There's women everywhere, bro. It's not a big deal. All right, make yourself the prize. Stay on your grind, get yours, and there'll be plenty of women's out here for all of us that are out here. You get what I'm trying to say? Now, once you reach certain levels of success, you are entitled to them, okay? And it's in those times that you need to be conducting yourself properly with them so that you're not being taken advantage of, you're not being um, undervalued, you're not being played like a sucker or a fool because I see a lot of guys that are valuable, that do have value, and they're over here giving women resources, giving women attention and validation for nothing in exchange, yet they had to work so damn hard for what they're bringing to the table and they let these women bring nothing to the table but a pretty face, when not only is a pretty face something you're born with, but it's in abundance and all these women are doing is, you know, amplifying it, you know, with makeup and, and all this beauty technology, whereas guys are still having to work hard to build that genuine, actual value. All right, guys? So what I'm saying is stop being distracted by these women, regardless of where you are in your mission. I don't care if you're just starting out, Stop letting these women distract you. I don't care if you're in the middle somewhere. Stop letting these women distract you. And I don't care if you've already arrived. Stop letting these women distract you. All right? And stop tolerating subpar women, bro. Yeah, we all have urges. We all need to beat something up. But stop letting that rule your life. Focus on your priorities and your purpose. And every once in a while, you can reward yourself with some butt. But don't overexert yourself for it. And once you get it, don't fall in love with it and wife it up and have it walking around your kitchen and not even cooking. All right? That's all I'm saying, guys. Stop, stop holding hands with these chicks. Stop giving these chicks relationships and wifing them up. Because ain't nobody out here giving you no pussy for free. So stop giving out commitment for free. It's common sense, guys. All right? Nobody's going to value you if you don't value you. Nobody's going to respect you if you don't respect you. Nobody's going to appreciate you if you don't appreciate you. You, you. you get it. All right, guys? I'm out of here. Peace.